Today, let's talk about Power Apps barcode scanning. It's probably one of the most underutilized features that Power Apps does amazingly. So what we're gonna to do today is show you a couple of quick demos and then show you how to get started both with barcode scanning on your phone and on your personal PC with handheld scanner. Sound fun? Then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, let's start with a little asset management. So we'll hit scan and then we will scan the barcode here on this lovely little toy. Look at that, we frame it up and hit go. And there is an automatic scan we'll talk about later. And you can see that it found the asset tag. So it looked up against our inventory database. It has the description and the picture and we can update all of it if we wanted. If we go back, we also then can do another scan. And so this time we will try scanning uh, Chewy's foot and it looks like your asset code wasn't found. Please enter the info. And so then here we could go in and do something like, you know, Chewy foot like that. We could adjust the quantities and then we could get a picture, take a photo and there it is. We'll use our photo and then we can add the asset and bingo, bingo, we have got that in there. Okay. So there's one thing, right? Inventory asset management. Because oftentimes we find, you know, you've got asset tags or if you didn't, you can buy the little ones you just saw there on my toys. They were like $12 on Amazon for like a sheet of a hundred with our little logo and our color, our own numbers. Like asset tags are pretty cheap and they're just great because then they get people out of typos, right? And whether it's asset management like that, uh, we had another customer that was doing like transportation stuff. And so every time they would get to the job site, they would scan the barcode to show they were at the job site. When they got back to the shop, they'd scan there. And so then that way they could track the truck movements between locations without people having to type. Scanning barcodes is a great way to get inputs without people messing up. Here's another example. This is my product research and rating app. So this is actually the one we built in my 301 class. Do you want info on that? Look up there. But with this one, what we can do if we say shop, we can go and we're going to scan a product. So this time we're going to scan and we're going to scan a barcode and it was automatic. So that's why it happened so fast. And what this does is it uses a third party API to say, okay, for that particular barcode, what is the title, the description, the different prices they can find on the internet listed at different sites. And in this case, I've added this one before. So then it's already got there, but I could update it. So we have the ability to scan UPCs, we can do the barcodes, we can do QR codes, you know, all of those different types of solutions. Um, and this app has about a million features. I'm not going to berate you with them. I just wanted you to see the barcode scan and get the idea going of, hey, looking up not only against my SharePoint or Dataverse database, but also looking up against even a third party API. Now, those were both on the mobile uh, phone. They were using the mobile scanner that works with both iOS and Android. But what if you're on a PC, right? We have customers sometimes that, like manufacturing or assembly stuff where they want to be able to scan from a PC and they can't use the phone's built-in barcode scanner. So for that, let's switch over to another app. And so in this case, I've got my desktop USB barcode scanner. The reason I call that is because look, it is literally a USB scanner that I also bought on Amazon. Maybe it's a commercial for Amazon, who knows? Um, but so I can take this, plug this into my PC. And once it plugs into my PC with my cursor in the slot here, so we'll take our little buddy toy here. We will scan him and you heard the beep and then it went and ran, right? If I scan another one, there you go, the beep and the beep. Just like that, right? So a little USB scanner uh, works just as well. So let's take a look at how we build with both of these in Power Apps. So to do that, actually we'll just take this app uh, right here. Actually we'll create a new app real quick. Let's go over here. We'll say create and then we'll start with a blank canvas and then we will say phone size. Now remember, we're just gonna go over the mechanics, how to use the barcode scanning stuff. If you're looking for like that asset management app earlier and kind of that full story, right? Like there's a link up there to the video for that. Um, this is really just about those fundamentals. So to get started here, right, we've got a mobile app. We're gonna go here to insert and then media and then we're going to go to barcode reader and then just add the button, right? Now, what's important to understand is that when you add the barcode reader, it is not a Microsoft built barcode reader. They're taking advantage of the barcode reader on the iPhone or the Android device. And so that's why we couldn't use it with a PC. And so in that case, they're kind of limited to what barcodes those support. So if we kind of get rid of this for a moment. So if we go over here to the right, you know, we have the text, right? So we could be like, you know, scan. Oh, I always overcapitalize. There we go. So then the barcode type, that'll give you an idea of the different barcodes available. Um, you know, I think code 128 is one I've used, you know, uh, QR codes, obviously UPC codes, 
But really, I just leave it in auto unless you have a very specific reason to change it. Otherwise, but hopefully that gives you ideas. And remember, if you need barcodes, you can, like I talked about, I bought the ones. Um, you can generate your own. So there's, you know, all those different services out there that will generate barcodes for you. Heck, I've even had uh, ChatGPT or Copilot create me an image of a barcode before as well. So you have a lot of different ways to get those created. So then we have scanning mode. So we have automatically scan. So what that means is that, you know, you it goes into scanning mode and when you hold the barcode up, as soon as it finds a barcode, it just scans, right? That's what happened when I scanned um, for that product app, right, with the UPC code. It happened so fast because basically as soon as I went to scan mode, it found it and it went. Select the scan, that was what I was doing in the first demo where I had to wait on it to find it and then I pressed the little green check mark to have that scan. Now, something we did not demo is you have the ability to scan multiple. So what the way I had all mine configured are, you know, one scan and then do something. That's pretty typical in the apps that I've built for companies. Uh, but if you wanted to scan multiple, if you wanted them to, you know, go into that and then you know, boom, 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 you just turn on scan multiple and then they have to select each one and hit the checkbox and then hit a different mark when they're done. And there's a fourth option here, scan in line. I have no idea what that does because it has never once worked for me. I have seen some vague documentation around it and it just doesn't work for me. So I don't know, maybe it, maybe it does for you if you figure it out. Like it's supposed to like make the scanning experience happen on the app is what I've read, but I, I, I've never got it to work. So, and okay. But so once you do this, um, now you know, we can hit play. Now, when we're on the desktop here, if we hit scan, we're gonna see a little message like, hey, to read barcodes, you have to do it on a capable device. And so we can't test it. The nice thing is though, is when you click scan, most of the time it will generate a test barcode so you can test your functionality. So let's see if it did. So with the label on the screen. And so the way that you get to this is you're going to go control name, right? So barcode reader one dot barcodes. Now this is a table of data. Since it's a table, even if you're only scanning one result, you still have to deal with the table. Right, that's how it supports the multiples. I wish they had a you know non-table way of dealing with it also. So we're going to say first. So that gives us the first record in the table. And then do a dot. Dot type would be the type of barcode it scanned. Did it scan a IS or a whatever they call it, like a 128? Or did it do a QR code or UPC label? You probably don't care, but that's what you do there. And then dot value is the number that it scanned. So that would be your barcode value. And so it will return one, two, three, one, four, one, two um, as the test numbers. That's helpful to know because in all my building, right, I don't want to keep switching over my phone to test. So then I usually just have an asset that is one, two, three, one, four, one, two, which is a default number for testing. So then that way I can, you know, work with that without having to switch over. But look at that, just like that first barcode readers, barcode value is there. And so that is, that's really it. Like, that's all you need to understand is that is how you get it. If you were doing multiple scans, then you're going to need to put that into a collection or something of that case. But barcode reader one barcodes would be that whole table. So you'd give that to the galleries and then your items properties would be value and um, UPC code if you wanted. Right. So we just do that. Let's just go here. Insert a gallery. We'll change it to be title and subtitle. We'll set the items to be barcode reader one dot barcodes. And there you go. So you can see that it's scanned. If we do another one, right? The default one's only ever going to return one item, but because we see the one item there, we know that our bar or our idea is working. Okay, so that's that's all you have to do to use one on mobile. Now, if you want to see the whole build, I already told you where to get that video, so go do that. All right, so while I was editing, I realized I used a bunch of QR codes. I never actually showed you how to use a QR code in the demo. So what we would do for that, we would insert our same barcode reader, assuming you want to do it from a mobile. And so then what we would want to do here is we're going to say, hey, on scan. So every time that they scan something, we want to take action. We're going to say we want to launch. And then we would say last self barcodes value. So this will take the last record that you scan, the last item that you scan, and it will provide that to the launch function. So as long as it's a URL that is returned, which is very typical of QR codes, then it will automatically launch a new browser window with that. So that is what it would look like if you wanted to have take action, in this case, launching a URL, 
based on what was going on. But you could do the same thing. You could set a variable. You could have it do a lookup. You could have it do a patch. Any of the things you know how to do with Power Apps on scan is going to trigger as soon as that scanning is complete. So anyway, a little bonus thing I thought I would add while we were busy um, editing the video. So back to where I was. Now, what if instead though you want to scan on a desktop? So you want to use this guy. Here's the secret. It's a real easy once you understand the secret. This is not a scanner, but Shane, it is. Yes, technically it is, but from a Power Apps perspective, think of this as a keyboard. Okay, right? It, this does not work with the blue button on the screen right now, but this is a keyboard. So if I want to get input from a keyboard, what would I do? I would insert a text input. Put that down here, right? If we hit play, we'll just clear out what's in there. We'll plug this guy in again. We'll scan little buddy here again. And then there's a 012 in there. And so that is, that's it. This is a keyboard. So if you wanted to automatically capture that, what would we do? Well, let's get rid of the keyboard. We would go down here and then we would say, hey, text input. Maybe we want to do something like on change. So every time that they scan, right, we want to, you know, set var scan to be um, self, right? This current control dot text. And so then now if we were to insert a label on screen down here, we'll say, hey, you show me what's in var scan. And then what we'll also do here on on change is we'll say reset self. And so then now if we hit play, right, we'll delete what's here. Oh, get rid of all this. Guess I should have set the default to nothing, huh? But so now that that's there, now if we plug this guy back in, I don't know why I'm plugging to begin with. Now if we scan buddy, there you go. And it resets the you know text input because that's the default. The I need to fix that. And so then now it's got text input in there. So we need to obviously go back here and say, default is nothing. And then now it would behave better. Okay. And so if you want to put that in a collection instead of a variable, that would work just as well. But there you go. Barcode scanning. It is a great way to be more productive with your power apps, whether you are referencing, you know, just capturing data, cataloging where someone is, you're doing inventory lookup, asset management, you're doing uh, UPC codes with a third party API, it doesn't matter. Documents, I've seen people put barcodes on documents. It is a great way to stop people from having to type in things and getting typos. Scan, scan, scan. All right, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. If we can do anything to help you, we build lots of these types of apps for our customers all around the world. I would love to help you build an app just like this. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.